alaikum and welcome to Making a House a Home with myself, Sena Araji, and our guest, Fahima Muhammad, who is a qualified life coach and an NLP practitioner. Assalamu alaikum, Fahima. Alaikum salam. Now, today we're going to be discussing uh, mental and physical abuse and the impact it has on us, um, which is a bit of an uh, important subject, really, because a lot of us can suffer from a mental abuse but we're not aware of yes, at times. Yes, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Can you discuss, go into some depth for me? Um, well, we are obviously sitting here in this show, so it's really about mental and physical abuse within your home, mm -hmm. in your family. It can happen a lot between spouses, it can happen between even, you know, um, parent-child relationships. And a lot of anger and arguments can be considered like normal parts of a healthy sort of like relationship. Mm. However, psychologically, it is not, and it's not really acceptable. Yeah. And I think the more and more we, we think like that and feel like that, the more we can allow these things to happen to us, and then we don't realize the effects and the impact, and it's because of that. Mm. And it's very easy to sort of like uh, gauge physical abuse, obviously, but I think it's more about the mental abuse that we feel that, you know, we don't know how to sort of define that and how to sort of, you know, um, sort of adjust ourselves to sort of saying, well, actually, no, this is abuse. This is not acceptable. Exactly. And this is actually happening continuously. And it's having an impact on my life, which is negative, And we, you know, it's actually going to destroy me. Mm. So I feel that um, I need to be making aware for both men and women yeah. have this issue. It's not just a lot of the times we think, especially in our cultures, that it's always the women that are being abused. But in today's day and age, you find that it's quite equally both, if not more, towards the men. And the men are not speaking about it because they're embarrassed. Yeah. And they feel they have no one to turn to and no one's going to believe them. And because they, they're male, they should be able to handle it. They should be able to overcome it. But actually, it's, um, it's happening to them. And it's really, and even right now, um, the suicidal rate, even in, in our Western societies, is really high amongst men yeah. because they don't really uh, address their emotional issues and their mental state mm -hmm. and whatever experiences that they're going through. And I think in our homes, um, women are becoming a lot stronger. Definitely, yes. They're much more powerful and it's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they are working, they're earning, they're looking after the children. Some of them are even breadwinners. Yes. And, you know, they have powerful powerful positions in their you know careers and professions and you know um, they sometimes you know feel that you know they can express themselves a lot more exactly, yeah. but it's just to what extent does any individual express themselves that is harmful to the other side mm -hmm. so these things need to be addressed and it's not it's not acceptable in Islam in any sort of human state and mind to really put someone else down I mean to yeah. embarrass them to look at them in a way to make them feel that they're not good enough belittling them yeah. belittling them so these are the things you know they either control what you do where you go how you dress you know I can understand if you have those concerns because you are you know thinking of their you know safety and security but mm -hmm. if you're doing it just out of the fact that you want it your way for them then, you know, it has to be something to be considered. Also, yeah. when it comes to um, mental abuse, especially if you think, oh, it's just the ones that they're being a little bit, um, the man or the woman is being a little bit, you know, possessive or obsessive over certain places that you go to and you're like, oh, that's just not acceptable. It's the one that's over, it's fine. Yeah. But when it's continuous and it's controlling and it's actually not giving you that freedom to choose, because even in a marriage, even in a home, we each individual have our own rights over you know each other and ourselves and we cannot abuse that just to think that we are the man of the house and it comes my way or we are the women that's you know mm. earning and working and you know we have to have equal rights and equal say and we can express ourselves anyhow and any way we want we shouldn't and we have to be careful when women are really powerful in their careers and professionally that when they come home um, they can probably resent the other side if they're not on the same level. Mm. And that's when the resentment turns into abuse. Yes. And they don't even realize it and they don't see it. So I want people to sort of like be aware of what it is that is mental and physical abuse. Physical abuse is normal. We know. You can see it. We can see it. Yeah. We can feel it. And it's, it's physical, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mental abuse is really a gray area where a lot of people find that, especially in our cultures, it is acceptable and it's the norm. 
to be, you know, only having one person in that household make all the decisions, for example, whether or not they consider the other partner. There might be occasions where that is, you know, viable and, you know, needed yeah. because the, that person has the knowledge or, you know, they're looking out for the whole family and they're looking at a bigger picture. Yes. So that's why it's really, really um, according to individual households and their circumstances. When I have clients come to me with these sort of issues of, you know, uh, being controlled, not having the right to make any decision or choices in anything, in anything, not even knowing what their partners earn and how it's spent. Um, I know it's, it's a thing that in each home they can take it upon themselves to actually, you know, decide, okay, I leave that to you. I'm happy for you to sort all of that out. That's a different scenario. Mm. But when one is seeking and asking that they want to be involved, that they want to have more input, they want to be part of that decision making and it's not being allowed yeah. and it's continuous, then that's one part of a little bit of, you know, something that's not natural and normal. And it's not just one thing. It's the abuse as in the controlling, the decision making, you know, preventing you from working and developing yourself. Being That's trapped, kind of. Being it's like trapped. being in prison in your mind. Exactly. It? Being fearful that perhaps if you were not to do things the way that your spouse, female or male, has said, you start being scared. Like, oh my God, what it, he, he's gonna, he or she's going to know that I haven't done it this way. A very common thing nowadays is that um, of mental abuse and people are not aware of it because we know we have sociopaths and narcissists. Yeah. And those sort of um, individuals, they have a tendency of... Um, sort of working with their other individual, their partners, for example, to say that, um, well, it's your fault and you made me do this. Mm. Or, you know, you are not good enough and you're, you're wrong and it's, it's, it's their blaming all the time that, you know, at the end of the day, whatever is done wrong, the other person is blamed for it. You know, you are doing something wrong and you're not right and it's not good enough. These are the things that is very dangerous. Yeah. We have to be in families and have connections and relationships, but still have the right to express ourselves and to have control over our minds and our body and make decisions for ourselves. Yeah. And even if those decisions are not met, we need to be able to sit comfortably and express it and you know have those dialogues to say, well, I want this, I want to learn, I want to do a course, I want to work, or whatever it may be, and have a conversation. And when it's done in a healthy way to say, well, I, it's not like I don't want you to work because I don't want to develop your, I don't want you to develop yourself. I want you to not work because I think that right now, that stage is not the perfect time, for example, because, you know, the kids still need you at home. Or, yeah. or this, that. That's a different story. So I talk to individuals in analyzing exactly where that stoppage is coming from and how often and for what reason and how has it come to that decision is it right. just being dictated mm -hmm. you know is there an authoritative sort of like figure in that family or is it an actual discussion that's when you know all these things can be highlighted to know whether or not you are actually being mentally abused okay whether or not you are actually in a in a state and in a mind that you know is not healthy for you in a relationship that is detrimental for you right and sometimes it becomes habit we don't even realize and even the partner doesn't mean to be that way so we can't always assume that they meaning to be horrible to you yeah. maybe they brought up and they've seen you know their father figure as the authority and always making the decisions and this is how it ha has been done mm. but you need to voice that you need to tell them because if if they're not being told what they're doing is wrong. Yes. They don't know that they're doing what they're doing is wrong. Exactly. So the first it? stage is first being aware that what you're doing, um, what you're going through yourself is not necessarily healthy and making you happy. Yeah. It's not giving you the freedom okay. to express yourself, even mm -hmm. if it doesn't come to the point where you get to get what you want, but you're able to express it and understand the other person's point of view. Okay. Because in our cultures, you know, it is very much male dominated still. And yes. the household is you know, this decision is mainly, you know, in that way. But a lot of modern families now, especially with women working, it is, you know, meant to be, you know, something that they talk about. And that's the healthy way forward. Yeah. And compromise. So I think, you know, in order to make sure that you don't have the sort of mental abuse, you need to recognize that you have freedom of speech 
and of action within your home. Mm. And you do have input and you have got a way of dealing with things where your opinions matter, your decisions are taken into consideration. Because mental abuse can be, even if it's not um, physical, you'll feel pain because of the stress in your mind, because of the stress in your body. And it can affect your relationships, it can affect your self-esteem, your confidence, mm. and it can really destroy you as a human, especially if you don't talk about it and you're not aware of it. Yeah, I mean, some people even say that it's, it's actually worse than physical abuse. It can be. Mental, it can be worse than you it know, can physically be. being abused. Because um, it's not because you can actually see it, it's because someone can actually believe it, that it's actually happening and it's true mm. as well. Yeah. Um, mental abuse can be sometimes even you or yourself might think, well, you know, I'm being a little bit sensitive even. He's not actually that bad to me. So it, it's both ways. Yeah. You have to be very careful mm. in, in diagnosing this, in making yourself aware of it. But it happens very often, especially when you're living in families for such a long amount of time over years and you get used to certain habits and then you realize, why is my life not moving forward? Why am I feeling even physical pain? Why am I being depressed? Why am I being stressed? Why am I not growing as an individual? What's stopping me? Okay. Where is my, you know, uh, my block? You know, is it the individual that's stopping me? And it, for so many stages in life, you know, you can put yourself off doing certain things, but when it continues over many years, yeah. you have to question it. Yeah, okay. And with, when it comes to mental abuse, not only can it impact adults, but your children. You could, ha ha you know, belittle your children without you knowing, being a That's parent. You could just yeah. say to them, oh, you're not really good at that. That could be emotional, emotional abuse. abuse. Yes, I was towards, about to come on to that. That's to, perfect. To yes. Towards that. So not, not only is it the adults, I think we sometimes forget to think, hang on, we might actually affect our children in the home with certain things that we say to them that we think is acceptable, but it's not. Um, you know, emotional abuse is, is actually very common and we don't even realize a lot of the times when we are even mentally stable ourselves that we use it for yeah. our own benefit, yeah. for our children in order for them to influence them to do something, mm -hmm. but we don't like, realize that it's damaging. That's why I even coach parents to be coaching parents so they're not actually forcing their children in a direction that they think is safe for them in an unhealthy way because they're using emotionally, you know, sort of like abuse for that. Yeah. By saying, if you don't do it this way, you're gonna end up that and doing this or you're gonna do that. And then they end up doing it, but then they're unhappy doing it. And sort of giving them the advantages and the benefits and talking them through it and giving them meaning and understanding for doing certain things in life, then, you know, that's a healthy way of influencing your children instead of, men instead of emotionally abusing them to say, oh, you're gonna upset your mom, you know, heaven's under my feet and if you're gonna make me cry and if you're not gonna do that, mm. you know, that degree and become a, a doctor, yeah. <laughs> then, you know, <laughs> it's not gonna happen for you. Your life's gonna be, you know, and this, it does happen. Yeah. People, I know adults have sat there, professional, really, really successful and completely unhappy because the route they've chosen is because of their families. And it's, it's because really of sad, that emotional yeah. abuse that they have experienced throughout their life. Mm. And yes, it is, it's something that we've, we've laughed about, but actually it's really serious. Yeah. So that's why I'm addressing this right now, because literally adults have lived their entire life with this emotional abuse. And they've taken a career, they've taken on a marriage, or they've taken on you know, any decision in their lives that is so long term that they're living with very unhappily. So yeah. that's the other side of it, which is not so in the extreme end of it where it's physical and mental in a sense that, oh, you know, um, it's the obvious. Mm. But this sort of abuse is actually much more harsher yeah. because you don't see it coming. It's a habit yeah. and you think you're pleasing somebody. And uh, to a certain extent, we should have those qualities of sacrifice, but to what extent? Exactly. You think you're showing love to, to, the, yes. to the child, but in fact you're not. Or the you're child showing love to the parent. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, at what cost? Exactly. And then when the child grows up, if this is normal for them and they get married and they have children, they have that same expectation of their child. So it's just rolling on from generation to generation if no yeah. one is actually saying, hang on, I don't want to be a doctor. I want to be a, I don't know, a singer. Or if yeah. I want to be, I want to be a chef. Yeah. So... It, we has something has to be said to kind of identify that hang on there there's a line between what's normal absolutely and what is on the verge of emotional or you know um, emotional abuse and you know 
our Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, has stated as well that, you know, we are responsible for our dependents. Mm -hmm. You know, they, um, the, whether it's children or your spouse, either way, you know, husband or wife, for either emotional support or financial support, whatever it may be. So that's, that's the man and the wife, to be honest, not just the, the, the man when I'm saying this. So, you know, um, the man depends on the wife, the husband depends, you know, you know but both ways, it, there's dependence. And obviously your children depend on you. And you also depend on your children to make sure that they are going to lead a life and live a life where you have guided them in the right way. And it's gonna be safe. Mm. And it's not gonna be looking back to say, well, you know, you made me make this choice and you make me have this life, which is actually now depressing for me. There's such a high rate of depression, anxiety, and stress. And it starts with our family homes. We think that the outside environment really, really, you know, makes a difference, but actually it's our home. A yeah. lot of the times parents come to me worrying about the amount of time that they are spent in school and the influence that is at school. Yes, there is a certain percentage that's there, but actually what you really learn from and take from is your actual home. So that's why um, we need to know these sort of states of minds that we're in. We need to understand that even though we have a culture of obedience and a culture of respect and understanding, we also, within Islam, there is freedom. There is freedom, freedom in a family where we can express ourselves and we can communicate and we can come together as a family and have a discussion even on things that are controversial, even the things that we're not gonna like about each other and decisions and choices, but we discuss it yeah. healthily, giving meaning, understanding, and the benefits or the disadvantages of whatever it is, choices that we want to make and decisions that we want to make, then we can move forward mm. in a much safer way. And then we can actually move forward in a healthy mental state. Okay. So these are the things that we need to be aware of, and there is help out there. If something doesn't sit right with you, you trust your gut. Don't just keep accepting. Don't just keep tolerating. Because you're going to get what you tolerate in life. Yeah. You're going to, you know, that's what it is. This is life. As coaches, even, you know, when I, I can really coach anyone and everyone should see coaching. And they're like, well, I don't have an issue. It's not about you having an issue. It's what are you tolerating? What are you putting up with? What are you wanting to do and stepping into that you're not getting? Mm -hmm. Now, that's where I step in and help you through that process to get you where you want to get to. Okay. Um, can you tell me a bit uh, more about the, the physical abuse and, and, and the effects it has? Yeah, as, as obvious as we say it is to some families and some cultures, even in our you know, sort of communities, um, it is not that clear to a lot of people yeah. that um, you know, the actual physical abuse is not acceptable. Um, it's very clearly stated that even though um, women or men or children should be obedient um, and should be respectful, but to raise your hand or to you know, be physical in any way is really something that is not acceptable. Yeah. And we need to speak up about it. And a lot of the times, even if it's not between the spouses, it's very, it's very easily done to the children. Mm. And even though it's law in this country, which is only recent, but in the old times and what we feel now that um, it is something that's normal in our society to actually be physical with the child. Yeah. And you, just to think what it does to them, because when you actually train and realize the impact, you know, the stages that children go through and how their mind is developing and what vulnerabilities they have, and to add mental and especially physical abuse to them, mm. that can destroy their entire future. That can destroy their present. That can destroy them as people growing up into adults, teenagers, whatever it may be. There's no self-esteem. They think there's something wrong with them. They think they're not good enough. And also when you're in a household which has got more than one sibling and the way in which you treat each one individually, you might not look at it as abuse, but the way in which you treat them, and if you don't actually vocalize and speak to them and say, well, yes, you're older and you might get away with the little things or the younger one gets away, they will use it against themselves, thinking yeah. that, you know, I'm actually a victim here, I'm the middle child, or I'm not loved enough, I'm the younger, I'm the older, whichever way they're gonna look at it. Mm. You as parents have to be so aware of your dealings with your children, especially when there's more than, you know, a couple of them at different stages. Mm. And it's not abuse, but 
it can turn into it, it can, because yeah. of out of you know extraordinary habits, which is not healthy. Exactly, yeah. And that's what is also you know we look at abuse mentally and physically like oh um, the obvious, but I'm actually talking about the things that we do on a daily basis that is actually detrimental for us, mm. and which we don't we don't get make ourselves aware of. And physical abuse is something which is should not ever ever. And there's no need for it yeah. ever be used, should especially for children. Yeah. Should not, for any circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, it can really lower somebody and make them feel into, you know, so degraded and so powerless, and you know, not just in their mind and in their body, but in 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 such a big way that they can actually, you know, lead themselves to thinking that they are nothing, that they deserve it, mm -hmm. or they, you know, they should get that. Yeah. But if they continue to allow it. And they believe in that actually yes. I deserve that to happen to me. And the children, if, if there are children around, which a lot of the time abuse cannot be hit, hidden away from no, children. No, it isn't. They start to lose respect for the parent. Because if, the pa if one parent is more authoritative and abusive, they will gain respect to the person who is in control and tend to, say for example, if it's the mother being abused, yeah. the mother will be below the child in a way where the child will be disrespectful towards that pet parent because they've seen their father act, act can, that way yeah. so it, it can also have an effect like definitely. that definitely well sometimes. it works both ways to be honest yeah. depending on the individual child they can either use it as saying they role model father being abusive and they want to do it the same way mm -hmm. when they grow up or they can turn it around and say well I'll never do that exactly yeah. it, it, there's so many ways in which you look at it Very but true, we yeah. we have to obviously be aware of the negative side of it so that it doesn't actually happen in and continue in that negative way yes definitely so Obviously, we know it's, you know, mental and physical abuse is not there, but I want people to be more aware of the little habits that people use against each other, mm. which can lead to something a lot more detrimental. And you think that you're not poking with a knife, but that pin constantly poking at you can do more damage over years than the actual knife, and which you see and you think, yeah. no, it's not right. Yeah. That's the only analogy I can really give you to make you understand as mm. to what I'm trying to, you know, make you see as the little uh, emotional and mental abuse that comes it's along the way. way. It's a good way of putting it. I think, like you said, we should take it very seriously. Very seriously. And our homes are our sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And if we don't feel peace, if we don't feel safe, yeah. and if we don't feel free, then these sort of things need to be addressed. Because those are the three issues that are really important to be in a household. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how old you are, how young you are, what money you bring in, what's your position, what's your role outside or in, there has to be, you know, some sort of like um, security in that house, which is giving, you know, people some sort of like accountability for how they live. Mm, yeah, that's great. Thank you so much, Rahima. Unfortunately, we have to end that again. Once again, a, a great topic to discuss and. Um, I mean, it's it's reality. It's reality. We yes. have to face reality. This mm -hmm. is what happens day in and day out. Um, but inshallah, we're going to go for a break now where we'll be ha taking some questions from our dear viewers. And inshallah, we'll see you soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Welcome back to the second part of Making a House at Home, where we've been discussing physical and mental abuse with Fahima Muhammad. Um, now, we are going to uh, answer some questions from our viewers regarding this mm -hmm. um, topic. Uh, the first uh, viewer is Sumaya, and she says, How can one find the love, respect, and trust for your partner after they have been abusive towards you? That is, that is very um, hard to deal with. Mm. But the fact that it's what she just said, like as coaches, it's very hard for me to describe it unless I'm in a session. Yeah. But just by your question, the fact that she said after, meaning that it is the past and mm. you've got to recognize people that they make mistakes and we cannot label them for life. And yeah. maybe they have their own issues for doing that. It's not giving them an excuse for it because it's not acceptable, but it's having understanding and empathy. Mm. for the abuser that they have come to that stage in their life where they were abusive but they've taken steps to come out of it 
Yeah. So you got to see them for the new person that they are. Because to be honest, we all make mistakes and we all do things. And if we want to correct and develop ourselves, we want people, especially the ones that are close to us and connected to us, to support us mm -hmm. and see us with a new lens. Yeah in order for us to grow and develop because actually that part of your development and growth and to change is other people giving you that chance and seeing you in that way and they give you that positivity by saying you know what you were that but I see you as better and when you see someone in that way knowing that they've hurt you but they're trying to make amends and you could and because obviously it seems like there's still love there there's still uh, you know a chance to move forward from this that even though you might have that fear of it going back coming back to you or that a little bit of, you know, bitterness, the fact that they have done that to you, because the impact is still there, mm. I'm sure. I'm not sure how long the stages have been. But regardless, the memory's there. You know, even if the bruises are gone, you know, the memory's there. So we have to work on ourselves first to say that, can I move past this? And yes, you can. You definitely can. You can mm. forgive people. If Allah can forgive, we can forgive. But doing it in reality is much more harder. So I work with individuals to help them break it down very simply to say that we are human, we are going to make mistakes and we can make the worst of mistakes. Mm. But if you have love for them and if you see them in the light, they will enter that light and they will stay there. And that's the other way I can only say it. And yeah. you do it in many ways. Give them hope, give them support. Have belief in them that they're going to do it. You know, sometimes a person changes for the better knowing that someone actually just believes in them that they can do it. And that's enough. Yeah. It's really powerful. It could be the motivation for it's them. It's the motivation. It's the drive. Mm. It's the encouragement. It's also them knowing that someone loves and cares them after they have treated them in that way. Mm. And they actually been given a second chance. That could create such a bond and connection and relationship which is even better than anyone can imagine if it's done properly. Yeah. But it's hard on your own because people go through up and down and it's, it's not a smooth sailing road. So you need help behind it yeah. because you're going to fall, you're going to slip, you're going to go back to old ways and you're going to have these thoughts in your mind because as humans, our brains constantly give us stories and a lot of it is protection and it's doubt and it's suspicion and that can hold us back from letting the other person move forward and us moving forward. But when you have a coach constantly reminding, holding you accountable, giving you that reminder that, no, keep striving, keep moving forward. Remember, he's not that anymore. She's not that anymore. You know, what are the steps that they're actually taking? Are they taking the steps? And then you can focus on it. Mm. When your focus is on something different to what you're scared of, then you can bring that whatever you want a lot quicker it will arrive quicker so that phase that he was at will disappear slowly it will be in the background and wherever they tend to become that will appear a lot faster and that vision will be clearer because of that focus so it's highly there beneficial is, for them yes. to, to kind of get yeah. that, that coach it's not easy it's not there. easy and a coach a trained mm. qualified coach can help you through these stages. And a lot of us, we deal with it by ourselves. We talk to our friends, our families, and we hear lots of things, and oh, but he's not doing this, and no one makes the rules. There's no rules. The you give it your meaning. Everyone is giving you their opinion, yeah. and then that makes you even more confused because yeah. everyone has their own view of what they think, you, how they think you should deal with it. If you just go to every friend or family, they're not going to tell you the same thing. At least with a exactly. coach, they're, just, they're going to be non-biased. They're just going to say, this is how it is. This is how we should deal the with reality. it. Reality. Reality, yeah. So No culture involved, no think, but you have your values and your principles, mm. whatever that may be influenced by religion or not. Mm. You know, these are the things that I deal with. So I have a, a selection of clients. It doesn't have to be from my background or, or, you know, culture or religion. They're all backgrounds, all, you know, faces and, you know, experiences that they have on their own, their own beliefs. It doesn't matter. But I will bring out what they are to themselves that whatever's authentic to them so they can live life in a genuine way to their own values and beliefs okay. and in this particular case um, you do need to go through the stages because if someone was to say to you well, why are you even giving them a second chance then it's so simple to just back off mm. and then completely disregard that and never let that person move forward or yourself move forward just from that one statement it's so powerful yeah so 
give it a chance. Sure. Seek outside help if you cannot do it by yourself, mm -hmm. if you cannot read the books and if you cannot seek the advice. There's plenty out there, but you cannot do this alone, especially if you're finding it a struggle already, thinking that I cannot forgive. Of course you can forgive. Absolutely, everyone can forgive. But you've got to know how to forgive, at what stage you need to move forward, and how to get through those stages. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. And inshallah, that helps our dear sister to, to deal with those challenges. The next uh, viewer is uh, Mayada, and uh, the question here is, my parenting skills are quite normal because I do consider the impact of my actions and words and how that they can affect my children. However, when staying or visiting other family or relatives, especially the grandparents, and they make negative comparative comments or just statements that judge, demean my children, then how can I respond to this? Ooh, this is a good That's one, quite yeah. deep, yeah. yeah. And it's also another common scenario because, mm. you know, in your home, you're safe, you're doing things the right way. And then when you go out, other people respond, react differently, especially when it's relatives or family, other family members, you know, uh, grandparents, as she's mentioned. Mm. And they all have their own way of seeing things and doing things. And also depending on the child's age, but even still, regardless of that, you've got to create a home that you set your boundaries. But you should not be afraid for your children to experience these sort of things as well, because this is life lessons. Yeah. You can't sugarcoat them, bubble wrap them, box them up and label them and send them out. They have to be open to that scrutiny. They have to be able to take that emotionally too, but with your support, but with your way of being so that they feel safe to come back and talk to you if it bothers them and you can explain to them. It'll be nice that we can go tell every person, no, I do it like this in my household. When I go to your house, can you also do it in that way? It doesn't work like that. We all have our own rules. Yeah. And ideally, it's nice to influence people and you could. You could have an influence on those parents and you could actually address it if you're close yeah. enough or Brits bring it up and say, you know, when you said that, this is how, you know, my son or daughter responded when they came home and maybe they're not aware of it so it's a good thing to actually address it mm. but if they're doing it deliberately or they just don't care and they want it that way because they don't see your way even in a, in a good way or they just want to complain and compare and say this one's you know grandparents or people just do it out of you know because of habit again they don't realize the impact so mm. educate them firstly yeah. secondly educate your children that they are who they are they need to accept who they are and people are going to have opinions about them good or bad they're going to still also be okay with that. You know, they're not going to have a smooth, clear road in front of them. Even from a young age, it's good to put that into them. Mm. Because we need to build individuals to overcome challenges. Yeah. In this life, we are here as a test, right? Yes. So let that be a reminder that we are living through continuous tests. As much as we love ourselves, our husbands and wives and our children, and we don't want them to get hurt they are going to feel some sort of hurt. They are going to feel some sort of challenge. They're gonna to have to overcome that. All you've got to teach them is, that's coming to you. Let's learn how to jump that. Mm. Let's learn how to walk through that. Let's learn how to, you know, Children. cut that, you know, bridge or, you know, yeah. whatever, break that wall. Exactly. If yeah. it's in our way. Yeah, Children need to become more resilient. Isn't Much it? With, more resilient. I think with two, as parents, like you're saying, we do wrap them in cotton wool. We don't want them to take risk, but in fact, risk is what allows them to develop yes, and progress. Absolutely. So even for me, like I feel sometimes I'm stopping my children progressing. Mm -hmm. So I've had to, every time I feel like I'm going to say no, I don't want you to do that. I'll say, actually, it's okay, do it, I'm watching. Yes, that's the thing. Which is hard. I think it's of more course. hard for the parent than it is for the child. Yeah, it's not like you're just <laughs> pushing them and saying, go and fly right now, they don't <laughs> like mind. a bird. They don't mind taking <laughs> yes. risks. It's more the, it's more the parents yeah, that have the issue. Because we have that awareness that they don't, yeah. of the dangers. But then we instill the dangers from our own fears, mm. right? So that's the other thing. And um, we have a natural inept anyway as humans to sort of know as a survival whether or not we should fight or flight in psychology we do have this where we either you know run away from something or we stand there and fight mm. and we have to learn even in circumstances as to which one we need to do we can't do the same for every situation too so um psychology is so important in every stage and every way and the more you get yourself involved in it and you think that we're in a home we know 
and the Quran and the Hadith teaches us all. Yes, it does. But we need to be able to extract the information, bring it into today's you know, psychology, you know, put it together and live both yeah. healthily. Where we're living in the way of our religion with today's psychology. And that's where Islam and our lives is modern and progressive with ourselves, with our spouses, with our children. Mm. And that's where people are not actually doing. And that's where there are problems in every area. So mental and physical abuse is done, like we explained, not just in the obvious, mm. but it's done even through our own family members because of the way in which they approach things. So we can avoid it when we have a tough mental state as well. And we don't allow it to enter us mm. and to, you know, infiltrate ourselves in the way in which we're thinking to make us depressed and to make us have low self-esteem and lack of confidence and things like that. So we need to train our children, but we need to have the training ourselves first and that mindset first. Mm. And this is a lifelong learning. What I do, it doesn't stop. And me myself, I'm continuously knowing I've got something else to learn and develop and you know, remind myself or go to the next stage, just like with medicine, just like with anything else. But the mind is powerful. So you need to know that because it's powerful, you can either allow it to you know, rule you or you take control. So you choose. Yeah, no, that's, that's a really good response to that. Thank you very much. And inshallah, hopefully that helps our dear viewer with those issues. Um, the next viewer we have is Hassan. And uh, he says, I love my wife, but I feel that her moods and temper really do affect me. And this may not be real abuse, but she does put me down. And whatever I do is never good enough. This has lowered my self-esteem and made me doubt my abilities and attributes. How do I approach the situation without making her more upset and also taking me serious with regards to the impact it has on me? Now, that's a, you know, I'm really glad that Amel has actually expressed their, uh, their feelings that's true. because yeah. you don't get that. So, you know, well done for kind of being of honest. Of course, and, and, and being, yeah, brave to come out there and speak. Exactly, Definitely. Yeah. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there with similar issues uh, from a male's perspective. And as women, and I can say this, you know, we can milk it. We can actually use certain situations to say, well, we're moody and, you know, we're tired and we, we cannot cope and we expect the other to understand. And there are times that they do need to understand. Mm. But at the same time, we can... Um, be a little bit more um, compassionate as well, knowing that what we are as individuals, the impact on the other person, male or female, to be fair. Yeah. But in this case, you know, as females, we can run a little bit longer with the way in which we feel and use it as an excuse. And it can be a bad habit that we create. Yeah. Our lives are lived through habits, whether it's from childhood or whether it's something new that we've learned and we, are quite manipulative even without thinking. If we have a certain way of being and we get our way through it, we will continue in that way, not realizing the effect on somebody else. So firstly, he needs to also be aware that is his reality of what he's experiencing is real. Is it really what he's experiencing all the time? Because we generalize and we distort mm. and we delete information. Yeah. Is it real? Is this scenario all the time happening? How often I will go through with him, whoever it may be sitting with this case to say, is it that bad? When are the times that she's feeling moody, which can be understandable? Or is it something where, you know, am I doing to encourage it? Or is mm. something else in the surroundings that is encouraging it? Okay. There's a lot of things to consider. That's first. Then is she doing it with awareness? because she's actually getting something out of it, so she's playing moody. Yeah. Or if she's just doing it because, again, of the surroundings or a certain time or whatever it may be. And are you actually communicating it to her to say that, you know, by you being and acting this way, do you realize what it does for me? And how does it impact me? Because mm. I want your happiness, but your moods or your way of being is not just making you unhappy, it's making me unhappy. It's making the whole environment and the whole energy in our life unhappy. 
So there's a lot of issues to discuss. It's very simple. But at the same time, you have to be careful because you don't want to belittle anything and you mm. don't want to expand something. You need to be very balanced in how you approach it. And first and foremost, we have to be knowing our reality because our minds take us to things and we generalize. L like children, um, I hate school. You know, it's horrible, for example. And I, when I question someone, what did you hate about school? Oh, it was that particular incident. Then you realize you're breaking it down. It was actually just one incident that happened, maybe at break time, and you just remember it, or it made you hate school. Yeah. But actually, you don't hate school. You just hated that one incident. So this is how an example of that is to show when we are you know, claiming to have issues or problems, mm -hmm. is it real? And if it's real, then what's the next step? Yeah, how definitely. often and what it is. So this is just an insight as to how I would work with individuals to sort of like firstly address these things and for them to also analyze it, not just in this situation, but everything else. They can use the techniques and the strategies that I use for them in this particular situation for everything else around them, mm. whether it's their work or other relationships, which will help them have more control of themselves. Okay. And that's something that I like to do with individuals is them having more control of themselves in whatever state they're facing. Okay. Yeah, and sure. I think that's very powerful. It's very interesting to know that individuals have that ability mm -hmm. if they have the awareness of it. Definitely. Thank you so much, Fahima. Inshallah, I hope um, that helps you, Brother Hassan, and inshallah you can find a solution. Um, try to find out how her day is, because sometimes women, <laughs> if you don't know what their day is, like, and you come into a situation where you, where you haven't been around, it can make us a bit moody. Well, it can make me anyway. So, But inshallah, hopefully you can find a solution for that. Unfortunately, we have to come to the end of this show and discussing this topic. Again, such a brilliant uh, topic, and thank you so much You're for welcome. all of your input. Um, inshallah, we'll see you hopefully again for an, uh, in another episode of Making a House a Home. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.